Welcome. This video is part of a series of videos that focuses on cabling. This video will assist you in the considerations associated with power cable selection. This video covers the selection of the input power cables and the output motor cables that can be connected to a drive. In general, when selecting wire and cables, it is important to not just take the size of the conductor, but also the material, the installation environment, and the wire routing. When selecting a wire for a motor, careful consideration should be given to the wire gauge size on the installation with longer motor lead lengths to account for voltage drop in the wire going out to the motor. Rockwell Automation has a free website available to help with this selection. It can be found at the URL rockwell.transom.com. A link is provided in the description. With this tool, a user can supply information about the supply transformer, the input and output cable, input and output reactor, and motor to determine if the selected wire gauge size is appropriately sized to account for voltage drop. Once the data is entered, the simulation results will show if the wire gauge selected is properly sized. If the simulation indicates a failure, a larger wire size can be selected until the wire selected passes. Rockwell Automation recommends copper conductors only. Aluminum conductors are not compatible with terminal blocks provided in the drive. Using aluminum wire has been associated with loose wire connections and can result in equipment failure. When selecting wire to provide power on the input side of the drive, most installations will have no special considerations. Some installations may need to meet electromagnetic emission standards where shielded wire would be required on the input. Examples of this would be CE, CTIC, or if there is an input filter on the line side of the drive needed to meet an EMC standard. The installation manual or user manual associated with a specific drive will include additional information to meet EMC standards. While the U.S. National Electric Code allows for PVC type wire insulation such as THHN wire and Rockwell Automation allows for this type of wire on the output of the drive, this type of insulation is not recommended, especially in damp or wet locations. XLP is the preferred motor wire insulation due to its ability to maintain its corona inception voltage regardless of the moisture in the environment. The majority of recommendations regarding drive cables are to minimize issues caused by the nature of the drive output. A PWM drive creates AC motor current by sending rectangular DC voltage pulses to the motor in a specific pattern. These pulses may affect the wire insulation, motor insulation, and can be a source of electrical noise. In another video in this video series, we discuss the effects of the output voltage of the drive and how these voltages can damage a motor due to reflected wave. In some applications, this voltage waveform can also create a need for the drive to have to supply additional current, called cable charging current. As an introduction to these topics, please consider viewing this video. This video 
will focus on selecting a cable to contain the noise associated with the drive output and sizing the wire properly to minimize the effects of voltage drop associated with long motor runs. Traditional specifications of motor cable include gauge, voltage rating, and voltage drop due to resistance. Another characteristic that should be considered is the capacitance between conductors. This is the key component in the creation of high frequency current. Not only is there capacitance between the conductors going to the motor, there is capacitance between the windings in the motor stator and between the motor stator and the motor frame. The current associated with these hidden conductive paths is called common mode current. This current is the source of noise associated with a drive that can be contained in a controlled path with the proper selection of motor cable. It is recommended to select shielded or armored cable going to the motor. Be sure to ground the shield at both the drive and the motor end of the cable. Doing this provides a controlled path for the common mode current and minimizes the effects of electrical noise caused by the drive in your electrical system. When routing this motor cable, careful consideration to other cables needs to be taken into account. This is discussed in further detail in another video in this series. Both shielded and armored cable contain shields that will contain much of the noise emitted by a drive. Armored cable is recommended in installations where moisture is in the environment or the cable would be exposed to mechanical stresses. On some applications, the mechanical motor brake wires will reside in the same cable as the motor wires. When doing this, it is important these power cables are shielded separately. When using shielded cable, it is important to have a continuous shield from the drive to the motor. In cases where there is a device such as a service disconnect between the drive and the motor, be sure to connect the shields together from the shield between the disconnect and the motor and the shield between the drive and the disconnect. When selecting a motor cable, it is important to consider the thickness of the insulation of the cable. Issues have occurred when the thickness of the insulation is less than 15 mils. As a rule of thumb, do not use wire gauge less than 14 AWG, especially if the insulation type is THHN wire. Pay attention to the insulation concentricity. This is a measure of how well the conductor is positioned within the insulation. On smaller gauge wire this can be an issue, especially if the conductor lies less than 15 mils from the outer wall of the insulation. For more information on cable selection, please reference our Drives Wiring and Grounding Guidelines. For other cabling considerations, please watch our other cabling videos covering cable routing and reflected wave.